Vai ser dita, viu? Claro. Estou gravando já. Tá bom, deixa eu gravar. Aqui não, não precisa. Uh, Lily is okay, so I can call him uh, Lily. 
Uh, he's from uh, Brazil, and uh, <coughs> he visited Japan for uh, uh, interview for your uh, for his uh, new books. So he uh, uh, come today. We have a uh, uh, short lecture for us. So uh, let's listen to his lecture, and we have ask him uh, any questions after the lectures. So don't be hesitant. Maybe Saruku will help us to translate. <laughs> so maybe you can ask him uh, in Japanese, or of course in English. So please. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Arigatou uh, gozaimasu. My idea here is, um, well, my research in Brazil uh, happens with a question that comes before the technology. All technologies come to answer a question. Sometimes, once uh, someone asked, why do we need a color computer? Why do we need a telephone that goes in your pocket? Why do you need a portable radio? Why do you need portable music. So why do you need some kind of technology and what's the use of them? That's why uh, our perception, our most concern is on the questions that precede the answers. And you probably see that in most of your, uh, most of your developments in the, your everyday projects that you realize that sometimes you want to innovate but you don't know where to, or how to, or where to begin. And a very good example of that is the iPhone. That we know here in Japan, the iPhone is not a great thing, because it can't pay your bills, it can't be used on a vending machine, it can't be used on a subway, it's just a silly, fancy telephone. So, why do we innovate and what are the questions that we're looking for? This is uh, a question that I want you to have when my presentation finishes. So what I want you to is keep this only question in mind. Why am I developing this? Why do people need this other technology? So that's why it is called oops, that's why it is called surf and trend watching. But I'll explain that in the end of the presentation. By now, it's just that uh, the best way to understand the new trends is to understand surf. Sounds weird? It's weird. But we'll get to that. Let's start with some numbers. Because, of course, every time you talk about technology, people ask about numbers, people think about numbers, and people seem to think that numbers are the only thing that matters. Sometimes people believe the numbers are important. Sometimes people just uh, only, take, uh, uh, only pay attention in the novelty of the things because of the numbers. Well, numbers in the internet. I've been working with the internet since 1993, and numbers were very tiny. These days, numbers are huge. We have 1.46 billion people online, which means that uh, about a fourth of the population of the whole earth is online, meaning that even in the poorest countries, even in the poorest spots on earth, people are online. But if you think China is growing in, um, in a big way or in a, some sort of uh, astonishing way, online is growing much bigger, there's five Chinas in 2007, six Chinas in 2008. It's growing more than 50% a year, which means that, of course, there will, be a, well, there will come a time, there will be stopped growing, but it's growing very much. It is predicted to double every two years until 2012, which means that the number of people we see online will be bigger and bigger and bigger. I work with some telephone companies in the Middle East, and in Africa and in the Middle East, and they are developing furiously. There's lots of people that will never get to a computer because their mobile phones will do everything the computer is intended to do. In the poorest parts of Brazil, people are using mobile phones because they make a lot more sense than computers. 
in Africa. People are using mobile phones because they, are, because they are easier to learn than computers. If you think about the time it took for you to understand Microsoft Windows or Apple OS X, and the time it took for you to learn how to use a mobile phone or a Suica system, you realize how fast and how easy it is to use a telephone. Video today is a quarter of the traffic of the internet, will be half of it in 2012. Mobile, of course, follows the same trend, and I believe mobile will be so big in so little time that it will be pointless to say mobile. It will be computing. Because we have already 3 billion people with mobile phones, which is half of the population of the Earth. And, of course, it's growing furiously. In Brazil, uh, we are getting to 100% of the population in two or three years' time, which means a lot of people in a country that's very big and in parts of it very poor. Some other numbers that people are not used to, people also talk about numbers, they think about overall internet numbers, but they don't pay much attention to communities. So let's talk about communities. Flickr is a community with 10 billion pictures. 30 million new pictures per day. Today, if you want to know something, you go to Flickr first. You don't need to go to Wikipedia, you don't need to go to Yahoo, you don't need even to go to Google. If I want to understand how the Tokyo Tower looks like, I can go to Flickr first. And then, if I have the time, I go up the Tokyo Tower. If I don't have the time, I have seen everything from Flickr. YouTube has 329 million users, which means that some old television programs that you've lost, you find that on YouTube. It means that if you have a band and you don't have access to main television, you can have YouTube, and I have a very good example of that. Facebook, which is the most popular com online community in the world, has 121 million active users. Active users meaning users that use their profiles, update their profiles and interact with them more than once a week. I believe that this will be a very uh, old number in a couple of years time. But in Saudi Arabia, which is a country that's very, very closed, that uh, almost no internet access is available, Club Penguin from Disney and Facebook are very popular. PayPal and Skype are another things that are great. Skype, everybody knows, makes online telephone, uh, telephone becomes ridiculous. I can talk to Brazil, uh, which is on the other side of the world, about paying about 10 cents of a dollar per minute, which is uh, unbelievably cheap. PayPal was built to be a sort of a uh, credit card system for people who work uh, with eBay selling old things. It has become one of the biggest, biggest uh, banks online. PayPal is a bank. PayPal uh, works like American Express, works like Visa, and is becoming so big that is starting to threaten these companies. Some other numbers, Microsoft Xbox Live, you, be, you believe that gamers are a very, very small community, it's not 12 million people. And the Apple App Store has a number that's very uh, interesting, has 200 million software downloads. We're talking about a specific product that, doesn't, that is not one year old, and people all over the world uplay, uh, update and upload uh, new software to uh, this company every day and it has more than 200 million downloads in less than one year. Which means that the numbers have become serious, they have become huge. And I always start with the numbers because when you start with ideas, when you start talking about things in general, you don't think uh, that they can be big or you think that they may be something that's very abstract or that's very small or that's not very important. 
but the fact it is important and has changed a complete uh, new way of thinking and a complete new way of uh, using your computer. In short, we can say that the computer has turned inside out. In the old days, we say that it would, it would be important to have an Intel inside. It would be important to have a very strong processor. But today I ask you this question. If you have the option to choose between a PC with a very strong processor and a big hard drive, but no internet connection, and an internet PC with a small hard drive and a small processor, you probably choose the second. So what is happening is that the network is more important than the computing power itself which is great because we can make a lot more things together than we can make by ourselves. Let me show you one thing to explain and to uh, exemplify the way things change. This is a small video clip made uh, of the things that became famous in the internet in 2007. Most of them you've never seen. Most of them you will forget. Most of them you've never seen and people have already forgotten. They are very, very, very uh, uh, rapid and... Oops, I forgot, uh, sorry, I forgot uh, the sound stop. Just... Uh, oops. Uh, I need the plug, sound plug. I forgot that. Sorry, my mistake. But uh, if you don't have no problem, I can do without sound, but uh, I think it would be a lot better with it. Let's find it. I am so sorry. My, my, my mistake. Can you use the microphone? Ah, use the microphone here. Good, good, good. I use the microphone here. Hello? Uh, good. And I'll, I'll start using the microphone myself, too. Okay. So let's... I'm sorry. No problem. Right, no. no problem. Okay. See, uh, so this video is a video of this video is a video of what happened in 2007 and beginning of 2008. Most of the things you've seen, most of the things you haven't seen. Take a look at this. The thing about it, and why it is important, is that the things are turning inside out. Uh, why is it important? Is that because it's some sort of power to the people? In the old days, you needed someone. You needed uh, to develop things, to finish things, to have these things on television and then to become famous to get your message across. Today you get your message across by uploading it to YouTube and that's done. What's the difference between one and the other? Is that things are changing very fast and they, de they depend on your product, on the products that you develop to uh, become even faster or to uh, get a little better or to last a little longer because the problem is uh, it's as easy to go up than it's easy to go down and this leads people in a very weird mood they are becoming anxious they are becoming stressed because everything changes very fast five years ago ten years ago there was something that was right and there was something that was wrong there was a model that I would follow and there was a model that I would never follow. There was something that was good or something that was bad. There was something that was for boys and girls, there was something for grown-ups or kids. Now everything is mixed together and people are becoming sort of lost because they don't know where to go to. And it's natural that they become hyperactive because they try to follow everything and they become anxious and they become stressed and they become busy and they become unfocused but of course because it's more or less like uh, most people enter the internet the same way you fall from a boat 
when you fall from a boat, you're seeing everything around you and you don't know where it's up, where it's down or where to go. And if you just try to catch everything that's going on on the internet these days, you get as lost as that. There's no way out. The only way out is to look and understand this as a group of trends and not trying to understand and make sense out of each one of them. Because why do people get, get crazy? Because everything that cannot be controlled generates despair. People say that YouTube videos are uh, of low quality. Uh, it's not true. The truth is that now I can get an idea across without having to finish it. That's the main difference. People have an idea, they spread the idea. If the idea is, is good, it sticks. This is something that was never done on television. If you have an idea for television, you have to build it, you have to test it, you have to air it, you have to research it, and in two or three years from now, you see if it's good or not. In YouTube, that doesn't happen. So what happens? People become uh, anxious. They want to do three or four or five things at the same time. And the worst of it, this thing is real. <laughs> this is not a Photoshop assembly of two different things. This is a product that's sold by LG by, for people who want to do, do two or three things at the same time. This is so crazy that I can imagine that woman talking on the phone, panting. <laughs> Hello, yes, uh, okay, no, uh, because otherwise she won't be walking, so it's, it's crazy. People want to do everything at the same time. And if you're a little older, or if you're uh, getting a little confused, you say, oh, but these times are crazy. In, in the 90s, people were a little more easy. Uh, <clears throat> in the 1980s, it was a lot more simple. I beg to differ. In 1978, there was a film called Network. In this film, a news jockey, a man who presents the news, gets crazy. Crazy. He gets, he gets depressed and he's fired and this is the last day of his work. And the last day, he wants to say something important on television, so he is completely crazy, he goes on air and speaks his mind. Pay attention at what he says. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going past shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Pants are running wild in the street. There's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do and there's no end to it. We know. The air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller and all we say is please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel belted radials and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to write. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being! God damn it! My life has value! <clears throat> so, I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore! I want you to get up right now. Get up, go to your windows, open them and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. Things have got to change. How many stations is this going to get mad? You said it's very bad. I know it's too little that. They're not going to take this anymore. Then we'll figure out what to do about the depression and the inflation.
situation and the oil crisis, but first, hell better than chance, open the window, stick your head out and yell, and say, I was born as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Who are you talking to, Craig? CGG Atlanta. Are they yelling at Atlanta here? Are they yelling at Atlanta here? But first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I was mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. They're yelling at Baton Rouge. Get up, get up, get up out of here. Scary, scary, scary. If you think about it, you think you realize that this is from 1978, which means that uh, it has 31 years. 31 years ago, people were uh, having this kind of problem. Otherwise, this film would never be produced. Which means that we're talking about films. So this film was written probably in 1975. But at that time, it would be pointless. It would be pointless to say, I am mad as hell or something like that. But if you realize there's a depression, people are getting, there's a crisis everywhere, people are getting scared, and uh, people don't want to, don't know what to write to their, uh, to their politicians. People who don't know how to protest or to riot. People just want to yell and say they are human beings. What is blogging? What is a community like Facebook? What is Flickr? What is the Wikipedia? All of these online things are exactly the same thing. Why do someone write on a blog? Why do someone spend so much time in an environment like World of Warcraft or in an environment like Facebook or Flickr? Why do people contribute videos to YouTube? But to the fact that they want to become alive. So that's what's happening. Simply want a very old idea is changing. And this change is enormous. We think we are used to think about the internet as it is the only change, but if you take a look at the change, it's immense. Now we have email, and we used to have internet cafes, but now we have email everywhere. We have instant messaging that changed the way we people people talk. All of these things that are uh, written here have been changing in the past ten years or less. We have alternate reality games. We have torrents and piracy. Things get pirated all over the world, we know that. Sometimes uh, a film gets, uh, gets to the internet before it launches uh, officially. Sometimes a film gets to India or China or Thailand long before it gets to the movies in the US. We have food is changing, uh, the way you address food and the way you prepare food is changing. We have mobile things that are changing, we have these kind of ships that you can embed to everything. Imagine, if a telephone that has a GPS in it costs 
$250 to build. How much does the GPS cost? $5? $10? It means that I may not have a GPS embedded in my skin, God forbid, but I may have a GPS embedded in my pants and it activates whenever I go to a party or whenever I go to a festival or it can be turned off if I don't use it or if I'm not moving. So I can have a sensor plus a battery plus a GPS and every time I put that pants on and I go to a very popular place, my friends know with their mobile phones where I am not because of my mobile but because of my clothing. This is changing everything. YouTube understood what MTV couldn't understand. MTV was supposed to be the network television for the young people, but they were made in the model of the old television and in the model of the old people. And YouTube understood it very well. And YouTube simply swallowed MTV. MTV was huge 10 years ago. Everybody wanted to be at MTV. Today, everybody is on YouTube, and nobody wants to be at MTV anymore. The consumer behavior is changing, digital photo is changing, play money is changing. Play money is that money that you, uh, the money that's, uh, is that kind of surplus that you have in your wallet and you can use it to do something. This play money has changed a lot. There was a time that you used that play money to buy clothing or entertainment. Today you can buy a new telephone or a trip or uh, something to your house, or some new experience. And that's weird because a Nike sneakers uh, doesn't compete only with an Adidas sneaker, but it also competes with a Nokia mobile phone and with a trip to Thailand. So display money is changing. The way I take pictures of my life is changing. This life caching is basically storing everything I do. And sometimes I don't even need to do anything. Just the way I trace my, my preferred spots on a GPS and the pictures I take and the purchases I make simply re register my life. Uh, the way parties are, the way uh, politics is, the way people change their, their bodies and the way they use fashion. And technology is just a new kind of fashion, which means that change is everywhere. Uh, we are used to think that change is just uh, a new specific technology or something that's digital or something that's happening on the web. No, change is everywhere. And if you don't understand that change is everywhere, you keep thinking about new products and you don't think about new ideas. So you have to understand what is happening before labeling it with a new buzzword. People love new words. Now it's communities online, caching, echo, sumer, transformer. What is that? I don't know what is that. And it's pointless. Everywhere you go, someone, a yeah, new uh, technology blog, or a new lecture, or a new presentation, or a new book will tell you about the tipping point will tell you about the new thing, the Wikinomics, or names they use to sell books, but they don't mean anything. So instead of getting new names, instead of trying to understand what these names mean, try to understand what is happening. Wikinomics doesn't mean anything. People wanting to collaborate and use the technology available to collaborate means a lot of things, not only Wikipedia. So, the new technologies are here to be learned. New technologies are learning experience. The best technologies, the technologies that make a difference, are technologies that cross a boundary and work on where people are not used to. One of my best examples is Nintendo Wii. Nintendo Wii is a bad video game. It's not good in graphics. It's not good in almost anything but it crosses the boundaries. While the Xbox and the PlayStation were looking for the perfect gamer and trying to get it to play in more sophisticated games, Nintendo Wii goes, like saying in Star Wars, boldly goes where no man has gone before. And goes to bowling, goes to tennis, goes to golf. 
and gets people who are not used to play video games to play video games and that makes a difference. Second Life was a huge mistake but Second Life was interesting because it took people to understand what avatars mean. Before Second Life, the only people who developed new uh, characters for their online world were the ones who played video games. After Second Life, people are developing characters. Second Life probably won't survive, but the idea of Second Life, the idea of developing a new me to act in a new environment will survive and will thrive. One other thing that we are all very used to, but it's a new idea, is SMS. Because SMS was very important for, for only one reason. It changed telephones. Before uh, short messaging services, telephones, mobile phones were used to talk and only to talk. After SMS, we started to send pictures, we started to uh, pay uh, for things, we started to use our telephones for other things than to talk, and it makes no sense to call them telephones anymore. And that's because of SMS. So the new technologies, the technologies that you need to develop are technologies that help people learn and help people to enhance their lives in some sort of a different way. Let's say digital communities, for example. Digital communities are a social demand. Why do people spend so much time in a Facebook or something like that or in a Flickr? Well, because they are alone and they are lonely in their rooms and they, people demand a lot of things from them and they just don't know how to cope with all of this. Because why there's no Facebook in small villages? Why there's no Facebook in small communities? Why there's no Facebook in small religious areas? For a very, very simple reason. Because these people interact with each other. When you go to a big city, there's a, pro there, there's, there's a series of problems that all act together. First of all, globalization. The same message is sent for here, and for Germany, and for Brazil. There's a problem of massification. You are treated as a mass. It's a back behavior. You are treated like a man or woman from 25 to 35 years old of a certain age or salary or spending group. You're not a person. That's, that's the, the division that we give to cattle, not to people. There's this urban concentration that everybody is lots of work and there's lots of time spent alone in the subway or in the traffic jams or in buses. There's a need to express themselves and to make their identities because it's a normal, basic human needs. So, people are using digital communities because they are alone and they need to interact. And the more alone people get, the more they will get to digital communities. There's no big idea in that. So, when we think about today what they say, the flat world, Things I see in Brazil, you're seeing here in Japan, people are seeing in London, in Germany, in Africa, in almost everywhere in the world, people are seeing the things, same things. You have to think about the trends are macro. The things that change here are changing almost everywhere. I've listed some of them, I'll pass to them very quickly. First of all, there's a geopolitical change. Power is shifting from the US to Asia and is shifting very rapidly. The crisis, the crisis helped a lot. Uh, uh, the crisis is, is um, happening very, very fast and it's changing a lot. The industry landscape is also changing a lot. Poor, uh, simple, uh, re repetitive behavior, uh, some very simple work is being now done in India in Malaysia, in Ukraine, in Romania and it's so easy to develop a new um, piece of software in Romania that why would I develop here? So people outsource from one place to another very fast. The nature of the capital is changing. Having land, having goods is not making more uh, the same that it had. Being son of someone being of a very, uh, very important caste is not important anymore. 
The labor landscape is changing and the growing pressure on natural resources. Recycling was something that was a very specific need, now is everywhere and we now know that we need more and more and more than that and we are trying to develop things. E-paper will probably come because newspapers are such a waste that makes no sense, makes no sense at all to kill lots and lots and lots of trees to print uh, on ink on them and then discard all that, it's sort of stupid and makes no sense. Uh, the technology landscape is changing, so everything is changing as the different strings. But there's more. The social fabric is fracturing. There's not the rich and the poor and the middle class anymore. There are different kinds of rich, different kinds of middle classes and different kinds of poor and you can't separate them anymore. The economic power is changing and uh, the massive global middle class is changing. Now uh, we have a huge middle class around the world and this huge middle class is making demands that none has made before. So the stakeholder demands are enormous. People are changing. I, I want to buy things from this factory, not because it's cheap, not because it's cool, but because it is. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Not because it's cheap or it's cool, but it's because it respects the environment. So I am. Mm, sorry, I needed that. Uh, we are changing, uh, the consumer is changing, and it's changing in, the, in unexpected ways. The knowledge economics is changing. So sometimes there are new ideas, if you take the, the open source community, there are great ideas that are coming from places that you never imagine, like Poland, like uh, the United States. Places that you never imagine that will come with new technologies, they are coming with technologies. So what is that? All these change make a lot of difference and have make makes us think. Makes us think on what are we going to develop? It's not uh, is it's not enough to develop a new technology. You have to develop a new idea, and to develop this new idea, you have to think about transparency. Without transparency, an idea makes no sense at all. Let's say some examples. There's a community on makeup. There's a community on new parents. There's a community on DNA-based people who share the same chromosomes. It's kind of communities for everything. Even companies that go bankrupt like this one, uh, they try to be open. They try to show what's happening inside. You cannot be uh, opaque anymore. There's no black boxes anymore. Because if you want to go, it's funny, because if you want to go to uh, a new company, if you want to be hired by a new company, the employee searches for the company before going there. It's weird. Ten years ago, five years ago, if I want to be hired, I just go to a company like, uh, oh, this company is a very famous one, so I'm now working for Nokia. Wow, that's great. I am happy for the rest of my life. And Nokia would search, oh, who is this guy? Is this guy uh, to be trusted? Should I trust him or not? And why? Okay, now it is the opposite. If I'm going to work for Nokia, first thing I will do is I search for Nokia on the web and say, is Nokia a good place for me to work? How is Nokia here in Japan? Is, uh, is there any possibility that I start working here and end up working in Finland? Will I like working in Finland? This is so weird. And this hasn't happened 10 years ago. And it's changing. And you probably be shocked that in some years from now, it will be the employees who will choose the companies and not the way it happened all, all in all history. So, you have to be transparent. If you want to be opaque, like Apple is opaque, like some other companies are opaque, they are closed, they don't open, they don't show, you have to be very, very radical. 
So if you want to be, you say, okay, I will make a company that is completely opaque. I, uh, my system, I don't open to anyone. My telephone, I don't open to anyone. Okay, you have to be a radical. So Porsche is opaque, Ferrari is opaque, Apple is opaque, and in some sort of way, Muji is opaque. But to be opaque, to, be, uh, to develop your business model in such a way that no one can follow, you have first to be very, very specific on how you choose to develop your products. That's to curate. Just like a curator in a museum chooses very well. If you are to develop uh, an exposition on Picasso, it's not, Picasso has painted lots of paintings and you have to choose 20 of them to show which of the 20 would you choose. So the same things happen if I, am, if I build a company that's very specific, I have to create. I have to develop things that are hard to duplicate because we know everything that you do is being duplicated in China. Everything that everyone does in hardware, in software, in clothing, in processes, in, in uh, ideas, in music, in entertainment, in video games, everything is being copied. So it's, it's not, uh, it's a dream to be impossible to duplicate. Everything can be duplicated. You just have to be hard to duplicate. And you have to be fast and you have to be unique and you have to be reliable and trusted. Which means that if you are, uh, if you have a very strong brand that develops things that are very specific, people won't even try to copy. And that's one of the big things on, let's say, WordPress, or YouTube, or Nike, or Nokia. They're not very specific. They're companies that are some sort of like every other. But if I make a replica of a Nokia, it's not as good as the original. If I make a replica of a Chanel or a Valentino or a Hollywood movie, we know sometimes it's even better than the original. So, if you want to do that, if you want to be transparent, so like I said, transparency is the rule. So if you want to be transparent, you have to think about the whole economic system of what people are calling Web 2.0. I don't like much the term Web 2.0 because again, it's another term. But this, let's call it the community web, which means that the web that's not built by huge companies, it's built by everyone and can be dealt by everyone. It has one of the most weirdest uh, economic models in the world. Imagine that. I develop something that's very expensive, very expensive, mm -hmm. and I give it. In return, I receive something that is worth nothing. And then I build something that is worth a fortune and is priceless. So, first I build something that's very expensive, and I give it. In return, I receive something that's of no value, it's garbage. And then I build something that's priceless, it's valuable. Does this make sense? No, this doesn't make sense, but think again. What's YouTube? YouTube is that. What's Flickr? Flickr is that. What's WordPress or a blog? Is that. If I develop WordPress, I develop a something that's very expensive is a content management system that's very expensive to build. And I build it and I give it. And what do I receive in return? Someone's blog, which is worth nothing. Okay? But the amount of blogs being built makes WordPress a very, very, very valuable company. Let's say YouTube. I develop something that everyone can place their videos. It's very expensive. It's, depends on storage, it depends on bandwidth, 
it's enormously expensive and I give it for free and what do I research? Someone's dog movie. But again, this dog movie doesn't work, it's not worth any, anything. But the more than 300 million videos are, are what makes YouTube in, of enormous value. If you think about Twitter, if you think about uh, any of these new technologies,